Hi, welcome to Mahika Tutorials. I am Mahika Motwani and this tutorial is the continuation of my previous tutorial where we created this beans.xml file to configure the different beans and so far we have created employee class in which we had given the attributes for the employee and in this project we are trying to perform the JDBC operation using Spring. So we have created this employee class with attributes ID name and salary and then we created this employee DAO class where we have given this method which will perform the operation on our database and the operation that we are performing is the insert operation. Now the only thing left is that we need to create our client code so we will create a new class and there we will put our client code which will which will invoke this particular method to insert the record so we will create new class and let the name of the class be test and we need the main method so we will select this checkbox okay now here first thing that we need to do is we need to instantiate application context and let the reference name be context equals new class path xml xml application context context okay and here we need to pass the name of our configuration file as parameter so we will give beans.xml dot xml okay and then we need to import it it should be class path xml application context and we need to import this application context now the next thing that we need to do is we need to get the bean for our employee DAO class so we will give context dot get bean and we will pass the id of the bean that we created there and it is e DAO and then we will give a reference variable to store the bean so here we will give import employee DAO let's say DAO equals context dot get, get bin and here we need to perform a cast so we will add cast fine now the next thing that we need to do is we need to instantiate an employee and then we can pass that employee object to our save employee method so we will create an employee object here same employee and then we will set the different values for this particular object so we will call e dot set id and let the id be 333 and then we will set the name so we will invoke set name sorry dot set name and let the name be Tarun and finally we will set the salary so we will call set salary method and let the salary be 40,000 okay now we can invoke the save employee method which we have given in this employee DAO class so we will call this method here in our test class using this DAO object so we will give DAO dot save employee and we need to pass this e object which we have created now here in this save employee method we have one return type of type integer that is this is going to return an integer value which will be the number of rows affected by the query so we can fetch that value in a variable let's say count and then we can give a message to the user let's say count row inserted okay and then we can close the context and it would require a casting to be done so we will cast it fine so we are done with the code required in our test class we have first instantiated this application context and then we are getting the bean which we had 
configured in our beans.xml this e dot bean and then finally we are creating the employee object and passing it to the save employee which will perform the execution of the query for us now let's check the database first that what all values we have in our employee table so here we have to fire the select query so we can give select star from employee now currently we have these two tuples or these two records in the employee let's run our test file and let's see whether this third record is getting inserted or not so we will run this now here the connection will be made implicitly by the JDBC template here you can see we are getting the message one row inserted now let's get back to our database and fire the select query again now here you can see we are having this third record with the values that we have specified in our Java code. So this is how we can perform the insertion using JDBC template. Here you can see that we are not giving any explicit code to establish the connection or close the connection. These all activities are taken care by the JDBC template itself. So far we have seen how we can fire the insert query using the JDBC template. Now in upcoming tutorial we will apply few more operations like updation, deletion etc. So thank you for watching this tutorial.